I think we need to talk about Purina and recent reports that their food is making pets sick. Now, if you are looking for sensationalism and if you are looking for someone to trick you as a viewer and for me to spout some pseudoscience or panic, I don't think this video is for you. This video is going to be about a very level-headed conversation about pet food and Purina. Now, reports on social media about pet foods sourced and manufactured by Purina and them making pets sick have literally skyrocketed in the past few weeks. And there have been an increase in number of creators on YouTube and people etc trying to make do with the fact that the food by Purina was causing all these illnesses whether that's diarrhea or pets were dying or whatever the case might be. Now let me be very very clear and this is very very important for you to know I am completely independent, we are completely unbiased and we can therefore say whatever we want, that's why we are not married to anybody, we run our own business. And so that's the first thing. The second thing is that we are not Purina's biggest fans. In fact, we think that Purina is one of the worst dog foods and cat foods you can provide your dog or cat with. I don't think they should add sugar. I don't think they should put wheat, barley, corn, soy, meat and animal derivatives, meat and bone meals and animal fats in their foods. We regard those ingredients as extremely, extremely poor and subpar and we don't think your pet would benefit from any of those. Whether they are labeled veterinary prescription diets, whether someone recommends them with any sort of emphasis or the actual merits of that person, whether that person is a vet or is someone who actually recommends the food and they really like Purina, we don't think you should feed Purina for one second, let alone for a few weeks or forever. Having said that, Purina is a huge company. Purina is not run by idiots. Purina have checks and balances and regularly, as in every single day, they will be checking the food for any excesses and for any problems the food may cause. We are talking about an international operation. We are talking about arguably one of the biggest companies in the world selling their products worldwide. And believe you me, if they found out that something was wrong with their food, they would recall it. In a statement, and I have let this by a few weeks because you don't really know how things are going to evolve. In an article on NBC News, Purina says its pet food is safe as allegations about sick animals multiply on social media. They said that an investigation found no issue with its pet food. Now, complaints that Purina pet food has sickened pets have been circulating on social media in recent weeks, sparking fear for dog and cat owners. But Purina adamantly denies there are any issues with its products. Pet parents continue to be understandably scared by an online rumor that there is an issue with Purina pet foods. This rumor is false and we are saddened to see the confusion and fear that it has caused, the company said in an online statement on Monday. Now, let me be again very, very clear. There is no reason why you shouldn't feed Purina products to your pets if you really like the brand and if you think that is the right choice for your dog or cat. We, once again, do not think that you should feed any Purina products, but this is not because of these allegations or due to any of these recent perceived problems that people have been uh, uh, sharing on social media. We think that there are 
two very distinctive camps in the pet food industry. In one camp, we have the wheat, barley, corn, soy, meat and animal derivatives, meat and bone meal. We have vague ingredients such as animal fats. We have rice being put in bags of dog food. And in the other camp, we have freshly prepared chicken, raw beef, pork liver, we have tendon, we have bone, we have all the things that look and sound like actual dog and cat ingredients. And we do believe that Purina adheres to the first camp and that you should not feed any of these foods. But this is again, not anything to do with any online reports or anything that might be wrong with Purina products from a safety standpoint. We do not believe for one second that a grown-up company, arguably the biggest or one of the biggest companies in the world, certainly in the pet food industry, is not going to have checks and balances every single day. They are not going to test and track different batch numbers, different countries, different sample sizes. They have a wide net of different distributors and retailers and people all over the world that they can meet up with at the behest and check what, what is really going on. We don't think that is a problem. What we think is a problem is all the ingredients they put in the foods. We think that those ingredients are very cheap, they are inflammatory, they're hard for dogs and cats to digest. Why we would put a lot of carbohydrates in, in cat food is literally beyond me. Why would anybody put sugar in pet food or in cat food? That is really beyond me. And yet, some of Purina products do include some of these inflammatory and inappropriate ingredients in our opinion. And so that's why you should not feed Purina pet foods. Purina says that their products are 100% safe to feed and we as consumers should really trust such a big brand because again, Anything that would go against Purina would literally be resolved in a court of law. We would have class A lawsuits. We would have so many things going on from a legal standpoint. Now, Purina are a very, very big company. They are perceived to be a very, very safe company and they would not risk any online rumors and they would not risk their reputation by videos on the internet or anything like that. So rest assured, I would imagine that they will have intervened, they will have adhered to every rule and regulation on the book and they will have made sure that there was no potential product recalls or problems with the actual pet foods. And so the best thing for you to do, if you suspect your dog has had any sort of issue is for you to drive up to your local vet or to a trusted vet and for them to check your dog or cat. It is absolutely beyond me how consumers these days will have a very, very serious problem under them and not take action, not take grown-up action straight away and try to flounder and try to go on Facebook groups and try to dither and waste time, quite frankly. If my dog or my cat were sick and they were sick straight away or I saw something wrong with them, I would take them to the vet. There is no other place for my dog or cat if they are sick for them to go but to the vet. And so if you suspect something is up with your dog or cat or you want to be reassured that everything is okay, you should take your dog or cat to the vet, to a reputable vet, 
to conduct any tests and anything that can be done to your dog or cat for you to be assured that there is nothing wrong. For you to go on Facebook, on TikTok, on YouTube or whatever and literally without any an analysis, without any blood samples, without any urine samples, without any tests whatsoever and start criticizing or giving your own opinion, it's really, really weird in my, in my estimation. So that's the, the one piece of advice I can give you as a grown-up, as someone who actually cares for your dog or cat and is not trying to be sensational. Let me know what you think. Have you really gone and checked with your vet? And do you have anything to add to this conversation? I would be very, very happy to read your comments below.